And welcome to another edition of the Traction Reaction Podcast. We're going in the Wayback Machine. We're at the Milwaukee Mile in the Venturini Motorsports Hauler. And some of the old-timers may remember. Of course, I shouldn't call these ladies old-timers. But <laughs> it was a few years ago where uh, the Bill Venturini had an all-pit crew, all-girl pit crew, I should say. And uh, we're going to be talking to Kathy Venturini, who's in the middle. First of all, let's introduce ourselves. Kathy? Uh, this is my sister, Carol Tortorisi. She was one of my tire changers. And then my best friend, Mary Bureau Popzak, was my gas girl. And we're talking about what year about? Is it 1980, 79, 80? Was it we, we origi- did, initially? Initially, we were a group of girls that got together, and we were Kit and Bill and... Milwaukee was our very first race that we ever did. We had come up to do PR pictures, and we wound up doing the pit stops and doing the race, and then it just grew from that, and we were doing mall demonstrations and all kinds of shows, and we were getting an excellent response, but it just got so big, and it was costing us so much money to do all these displays and demonstrations that we wound up disbanding. Sports Illustrated came in and wanted to know if we would put the girls together. And we said if we had a sponsor. So this is the second time? Yes. That was in 85. So now we're talking ARCA, the ARCA series. The Permatech series. Yes. Because Permatech was the series sponsor we went to them and they jumped at the opportunity they were coming out with a new silicone gasket and they said we're going to call it the ultra blue crew so we became the ultra blue crew and uh, we did all the pit stops got the band back together yes we got it all back together we had a great time we very competitive that was the one thing bill said is we had to be competitive if we weren't fast enough, we weren't going to do it. Mm-hmm. And we practiced. We we had nights <laughs> well, of practice. Did we practice? <laughs> yeah. The hours I mean, of putting that yellow snot over and over <laughs> on all the lug nuts. And then we oh, yeah. The glue, yeah. An hour for it to settle. Sure. And then, okay, do another pit stop. And yeah. All over again. So it's you like, guys were probably practicing more than some of the crews back in the day. Probably. Back there, probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Back then, when we came into ARCA with the girls... It was common practice that majority of the guys would lose a lap doing pit stops. And Bill <laughs> said, there is no losing a lap. Figure it out and make sure I don't. You so said that from day one. That was our goal, and that put the competition in arc of pit stops. Yeah. Because guys don't want to be beat by a bunch of women. Mm-hmm. You know? So... Everyone stepped up their game, and it became very nice to watch an ARCA race with our live pit stops, and it was competitive. And, and here's something that some of our younger listeners may not be aware of. There was no pit lane uh, speed limit was it back there, was oh, there? no. We had no helmets. <laughs> nothing. We had no I fire wore suits. I wore an apron of gas. We it's had changed. no speed limit. It's changed a lot. So... I'm happy to see all those new changes come right. through, but mm-hmm. we didn't have any of that. Wasn't well, unusual for a, car, a big old stock car is going past you at over 100 miles an hour, wasn't oh, it? Oh yes, yes, we had some uh, adrenaline rush. Yes. I bet. Well, I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was exciting. Yeah. I'll tell you that, oh, yeah. and we loved it, and we were good at it. And in '87. Bill won his first championship with the girls, so that was a huge deal. It yeah, sure was. it was. It just sealed everything we worked so hard for. Mm-hmm. We practice almost every weekend at outside of their house and their garage. In and the that's where we in the driveway. Went, in the driveway, and before they even the neighbors loved North us. Carolina. How about, how about the when you when you were pitting next to somebody, were you getting looks from the other pit crews oh, like, gosh, oh, we yes. can't we can't lose oh, to all these guys all in the pits. The time. Especially I was only 15. I was a child. I was a teenager. And once I started changing tires in the rear, it was just my sister and I. We were the tire team. That was it until the girls were done. That was a huge thing. That was an accomplishment. 
we always knew you lose Bill a lap, you're gone. I mean, there was things that we Now, was there turnover at all? Was there some maybe we need to make a change, you got another girl? No different than a guy crew. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't. There were people that would come, and it just wasn't what they thought it was. Mm -hmm. Big commitment. That's the other thing, too. Yeah. Right. And that's what I see. I don't think there's any variance in how many people we go through with the females versus the males because of the commitment and the work that you have to do. It was a little rougher traveling back then, too. How did you guys do the hotels in that? <laughs> oh, it was quite, we, quite the fiasco. Carpentex had, had a mild out station wagon, yep. and they gave it to us to transport the girls. Okay. So, and then we always had a van. Like we had a, right. like a cute van. There was a cute van cute you guys van. had for... Oh, that was fun. But it was... Pocono. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kathy was running the entire female pit crew show. From start to finish, it was... And learning as she went along sure. as well. Because it was and way different than handling the guys. When when we were done with the girls, when our contract was over with, with Permatex, and we had won the championship mm-hmm. in 87, I stayed on the guys' crew. I changed Same. tires okay. for 10 years. So... I didn't quit changing a tire until my son wanted to change a tire when he I was 16. Him. When he turned 16, he says, all right, I'm old enough. I want to change tires. Yeah. Is that Billy? Yeah. Yeah, that Billy? Okay. I see on the crew. I, I went to the overflow when the guys started. Back mm-hmm. up and that was the second championship was in 91. 91. Yep. And then I got engaged. And I was done. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing that kind of sticks out in your memory? The one uh, winning the championship, or is there one moment that kind of puts it all together? Where there was never a track that we were not at that the cameras were on us all, all the, the time. time, waiting for us to make a mistake. When okay. women back in the eighties were not allowed even in the NASCAR garages, mm-hmm. I'm talking half the, the wives weren't. Yeah. They weren't there. We were there doing a job and. Technically, they have to let us in because right. we had to get to where the tire company was. K- K- Kathy would say, hey, sis, I need you to run to the radio, da 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 whoever it was. Well, that's right. the other right. thing, too. Yeah, it's there's a lot of other duties during the weekend, you guys. Oh, yeah. You know, we they, had to go with they, the gas. They pushed the car. They did every, we did weather everything. Tech. everything. We took the cars through tech, you know, so. We had the head engine, which back in the day was Norman. Norman, yeah most of the time and we had a couple guys that were helping you know do under the engine stuff Mm -hmm. we had to go back and forth with the wagons pulling the fuel getting the tires cleaning the inside and outside of the car getting bills all his stuff together in the grist car i mean kathy would make sure his radios his water cooler her i mean we just we never stopped and everywhere we went we went we always had the cameras on us because we were the first ever and they've never done it again there's never been another all-female pit crew and really this day and age should be so much easier to Mm -hmm. accomplish that women work out today the health none of us worked out back then only because i was a kid yeah. <laughs> I had two kids. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of moms. I, I was a mom. I yeah. was working. I I didn't have time to work out on top of my it. workout was our practice. <laughs> yeah. Because most of the, the women were women. They had yeah. careers. They were working. So it was between that and the traveling. I got to travel. Obviously. I mean, we went to Australia. I mean, I went to places that I... We did some neat things. We we met all the vice presidents or the owners of, you know, Loctite, Mm -hmm. Hermitax. Um, Had, you know, very influential Chris Economacki sat with us in Australia at our Loctite... I mean... a lifetime of great memories. Richard Petty to Dale Earnhardt to the, the stars, you know, actors and actresses that always came. Everyone wanted to see us, and when we would follow through and carry through what we were there we to had, do, we had a lot we of had the respect and a lot of courage. Yep. Good. We did. Really we had good. a lot of pressure, lifetime of pressure, and we just 
we delivered. We were a family I mean, there on the were, road too. Yes. We were a family <laughs> on the road. Typical family. Typical family. We were together all the time. Not, not without difficulty. Very good. I certainly appreciate you guys taking time out, and this uh, I'm sure that I'm sure the listeners and the viewers have certainly uh, gotten their eyes open to a little, a pretty cool piece of uh, stocker history. So thank you for taking time out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.